felt like home, that mythic place that exists somewhere out there, or better yet, someplace in here. This has been a gradual dawning. I guess it sort of crept up on me like middle age. It's 1992, and I've come to the realization that there is a dull ache at the center of my being with the tiniest tear inside, an inexplicable feeling that something is missing from my already happy life. This is ridiculous. French was my first language, but I only spoke it till I was about three years old. That's a pretty small vocabulary, right? <laughs> I called up a friend of mine, and I asked her what her three-year-old son's vocabulary was like, and my suspicions were confirmed. <laughs> my French probably consisted of simple sentences and incorrect tenses and the word why over and over <laughs> and over again. This is very disappointing. If I took all the French words I knew when I was a kid and I put them into this ache, I know it won't be enough to fill the hole. It's all out of proportion. But then I, I realized that my friend said that her son seems to understand what she and her husband are saying, even if it's fairly complicated. This is good. I heard French growing up. I must have understood it longer than I spoke it. You know, someone speaks to you in French and you answer in English. Still, it nags at me and I can feel the ache growing. I'm not saying that I'm aware of it all the time, that it's debilitating or anything, but it has a way of nibbling at the edges of my subconscious or whispering in my ear. Bonjour, Suzanne. Bien sit, Suzanne. Voyons, Suzanne. Or, <laughs> when I least expect it, sitting me down hard. Like when you ch think a chair is higher than it is and you plop it. It's been 10 years since I first became aware of the ache. It's 2002, and I'm in the car on my way to a French language immersion in St. George de Beauce, Canada. An immersion is a way of learning where you immerse yourself in the language and 
distracting. So I've taken the big step and I've signed up for a conversational French class at the university. I figure if I can learn to speak French again, the ache will go away. The class meets once a week and I'm really excited about it. I've always been a good student and I have a background in French, so it should be easy. I'm looking forward to talking to my husband Gordon in French. Pour moi, ce n'est pas trop difficile d'apprendre le français. Merci, Gordon.
she doesn't have this egg. Jane doesn't even like the term Franco-American because it reminds her of Franco-American spaghetti, which she hates because that reminds her of babysitting. <laughs> More often than not, that's what the parents would leave her to feed the kids. I, on the other hand, have very fond memories of Franco-American spaghetti. Oh, God, I love the mushy noodles in their orange sauce. <laughs>
bowl of soup would have cheered us up, but we knew how to live without the frills. Now an 1880 of momentous event happened to rouse us from our discontent. Over the ocean, the soup maker came. Alphonse Biardo was his name. Alphonse, oh, Alphonse Biardo, a Franco-American that everyone should know. A true man of vision, not a nakum poop. Celeste wedding reception. 
section. Celeste and her husband David crossed the big divide. David was Irish Protestant and Celeste, of course, French Catholic. Um, even though she never asked him, he studied in secret and he converted to Catholicism. They tied the two ends of the town together and the wedding party lasted for three days. It was post-World War II and my parents' generation that the ethnic line began to blur. World War II was a turning point for many Franco-Americans. Prior to that time, a lot of Franco-Americans tended to consider themselves French Canadians who happened to live in the United States. But with World War II, they had to choose, and many pledged their allegiance with over 100,000 serving. My grandfathers were too old to serve, of course, but they left Jackman and they went to work in the shipyard in Providence, Rhode Island. Can you imagine the culture shock? The lumbermen from the North Country were put to work building docks. The Union controlled the workplace, and this was problematic for the Francos because they were used to working communally, helping each other out. That's how it was on the farms in Canada or when they were out logging. But the Unions insisted that they do one job, period. In fact, George Blue and the other Francos were warned not to work so fast. This drove them crazy. Yikes, I understood that. <laughs> Franco showed their loyalty in other ways, too. War bonds were being sold to raise money for Liberty ships. One Liberty ship cost $2 million. An effort was mounted by Franco-Americans to raise enough money for three Liberty ships. Money, uh, war bonds were sold in church basements after mass. When all was said and done, Franco's doubled their goal, raising $12 million. In a show of patriotism, six Liberty ships were built and named after famous Franco-Americans. My Uncle Ralph went to work in the shipyard in Portland, Maine. He was a welder of these Liberty ships, and for the first time, thought of himself as 100% American. It was the war that made us American. It was a war that changed it all. We were among the minorities who made a difference overseas. Franco's have a right to be standing tall. It was the war that made us American. No one can question where we stand. On us you can depend. We'll fight right at the end, defending this our home, our land. Oh, that one was French. It met in my M1.
Jeremy. I know that. Just. <laughs> just. Just. En quelle saison neige-tu? La. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. It starts with an H. I know it starts with an H. <laughs> 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 uh, comment vous appelez-vous? To find the words in my head and get them past my tongue is just so difficult. Pardon, Neil. Merci, Suzanne. Next week we start at the beginning. <laughs> that hurt my brain and my heart. It feels like there are cobwebs in my mind, all this clutter, and I don't know where the language is. I can't find it. Chase him. 
tout pour aujourd'hui, Suzanne. À la semaine prochaine, même heure. Même heure. Today's lesson was a big one. First, we were dans au restaurant. Garçon, l'addition, s'il vous plaît. Garçon, l'addition, s'il vous plaît. Then on to au grand magasin, a department store. Je cherche une grande lampe et une fauteuil pour ma chambre. Je cherche une grande lampe et une fauteuil pour ma chambre. These are always the early lessons. Frankly, most textbooks could use a little creativity. How about learning uh, body parts and drink ordering in Jacques and Pierre? Visit the strip joint. <laughs> La grande femme aux cheveux blonds. Elle en est belle jambe. Ça ne trouve pas? Oh là là. <laughs> Or uh, adjectives in Simone Watch's QVC. Regarde cette bague de barreau. Ah, ce qu'elle est belle. Oh là là. <laughs> I'm going to look into this thing called an immersion program. I think that's where you go away somewhere and they don't let you leave until you can speak the language. <laughs> in and out. 
swirling around my brain and makes me feel somehow disconnected from myself. So I tried a one-day French immersion course where I excelled at lunch, <laughs> eating it, not talking about it. The teacher was from Belgium, and we made this dish that she grew up with, endive wrapped around ham baked in a bechamel sauce, which at first glance doesn't seem like the food of my people, but think about it. White sauce and pork. <laughs> uh, the day was so intense, and I can't even imagine going on an immersion for a week. Okay, I'm coming into St. George. I know I will be well taken care of. I don't have to worry about a thing. I just have to stay in the moment, keep my heart open. And if I get scared, call on the power of my ancestors, my guardian angels, chocolate. Anything I can think of, but I'll be fine. Bonjour, je m'appelle Suzanne. Je suis Léo, et voici ma femme, Jocelyne. I'm meeting my host family, Léo and Jocelyne. Tu as fait bonne fruit? Oh, uh, très bien, merci. Tu dois être fatiguée. Suis-nous donc jusqu'à la maison. Lentement, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> Suis-nous avec ta voiture. <laughs> Follow us. <laughs> oh my god, I totally panicked. I couldn't remember any French whatsoever. I felt like crying the whole time. It was really, really scary. <sighs> but uh, Leo and Jocelyn seem really, really nice. And get this, I'm the only one out of 22 students who's in a house by themselves without another student. That is my guardian angel looking out for me. Because I know if there was another student around, I'd speak English because I'm weak. I admit it. The weird thing is, everyone here thinks that I speak French because my name is so French, you know? Suzanne Poulain? Poulain de la Bourse? And then they start speaking French to me at about 100 miles an hour, and I totally short circuit, and all I hear is. <laughs>
It has to be the perfect chest before I can see what's inside. So it stays closed. It's time for me to come out of my trance now. Mary Lou's counting me up. One, two, three. Totally relaxed, I come to the surface thinking, un, deux, trois. There is no Helen Keller moment. No tumbling forth of my long lost French. Last night, Leo said that we were going to have crepes for breakfast this morning. At least I think that's what he said. <laughs> crepes. That, that is a big deal. I love crepes. My grandmother mom used to make crepes in a cast iron skillet, and she'd flip them with a butter knife. She made them, we'd eat them with butter, of course, or maple syrup, brown sugar, molasses, uh, raspberry jam, or all of the above. <laughs> I was a teenager before I ever had a pancake, and I thought it was the most mushy, disgusting thing. It's quarter past seven in the morning, and I've been standing at the door to my room for about ten minutes trying to muster up the courage to open it. The thought of going upstairs and not being able to say what I want to say, what I need to say. I'm going to have to speak French all day today. It's overwhelming. You can do it. I know you can do it. You can do it. I know you can do it. Oh, <laughs> weird coincidence. When I was a teenager, my room was in the finished basement, and that's where my room is here, too. The voices of Leo and Jocelyn are drifting down the stairs the way my mom and dad's used to when I was a little kid. I'm taking what I call a Eugene O'Neill sort of day. That's where I rent sad movies, wallow in self-pity, cry a lot, and eat ice cream directly out of the container. <laughs> it's afternoon and I'm still in my pajamas. It no longer feels like the ache is in the middle of me. It feels like I am in the middle of the ache, which is by now is this bubble that fills the whole room. I am just so disgusted with myself and my inability to speak a language I spoke as a child, for God's sakes. I'm sad and mad and I hate it. I hate French. And let's face it, I am never going to learn to speak it. Did you hear that? The air just went out of the ache. I am never going to learn to speak French. <laughs>
and I had a really hard time in the restaurant. The waitress hovered and didn't give me time to look at the menu, so it was hard for me to decide what I wanted, especially in French. But then, Justin and I had a really nice lunch together. We talked, just the two of us, the whole lunch, and I did pretty good. We have a French-English dictionary on the table beside us, which we both have to use from time to time. But I feel like I'm at least communicating on a basic level in French. Ah, bonjour. Uh, je m'appelle Suzanne. J'habite à South Berwick avec mon mari Gordon. Nous n'avons pas d'enfants, uh, mais nous avons une chienne. Elle s'appelle Belle. Belle est très intelligente. <laughs> C'est tout. I love my conversational French class. Believe me, I'm as shocked as you are. Uh, it meets once a week on Tuesday afternoons, and it's all women in the class, to les femmes. And the teacher, Carole, is great. We just click, the whole group of us. Carole doesn't use a textbook. She has handouts, some from books, but a lot of which she makes up herself. Plus, we have writing assignments every week, so we're learning vocabulary that applies to our lives. The immersion is meeting in a park tonight, and I'm driving there all by myself. But Jocelyn gave me great directions en français. There are hardly any beginning French students here. The advanced students and the program coordinators are playing patank, which is like bocce ball, I think. Bonjour, Denis. I love saying bonjour. It makes me feel like I really know how to speak French. Bonjour, Suzanne. And when someone says bonjour back to me, for a brief moment, my heart fills with belonging. Hey, prends ma place. Oh, no, no, no. I don't know how to play. Oh, oui, oh, oui. Viens d'en jouer. Okay. So I play. You have these big silver balls, and you're supposed to toss them and get near a small green plastic ball or hit another silver ball. So the other team goes, and then it's my turn. So they show me how to hold the ball, and I throw it. <laughs> One shot ends the game. My team wins.
sweet slice of pie. And then we had our picture taken, the whole group of us, and Jocelyn gave me a, a little gift bag. It had a new French English dictionary and note cards and a bookmark with Suzanne and a petite 